Hello all, welcome back. Today we will be discussing how to configure static IP in Linux. In the previous videos, we have discussed the overview of uh, Cassandra and the software requirements that are required to build a Cassandra cluster and we have downloaded the required softwares. And in the earlier video, we have discussed how to install Linux sent OS or virtual machine. In today's class, we will be discussing about the static IP configuration. The first question is, why do I need the static IP configuration? It's already dynamic and it is giving some IP address already. When we ping Google, we are getting response, it's connected to internet. Then why do we need a static IP configuration? Let us suppose we have installed Cassandra and it is running over an IP, say the last digit is 100. 192.168.1.100 and now to connect to that Cassandra we use the same IP address 192.168.1.100 now as it is dynamic IP when you restart the machine there is always scope of changing the IP so whenever the IP changes you need to change the AML file and bring the cluster up again and we need to communicate the same change in IP to all the clients they too need to do some configuration changes every time the IP changes there's a lot of work to be done. So to avoid all this hectic process, what do we do is we always try to keep the IP constant. So to keep a constant IP, we are going to configure it as a static. How do we do that? So let's proceed with that. You have already downloaded all the required softwares. Now go ahead and install mobile xterm installer. I have already installed it. So I'll be using the installed version in my machine. It's simple, simple process. Just keep on clicking next, next, next till you finish. And let's open virtual machine, VMware workstation. In the previous video, I have installed CentOS Node 3. And I have told you that you must be using the network. In network adapter, you need to choose NAT, used to share the host IP address. Hope you have already done that. Now let's open play virtual machine. In the meanwhile, I'll go ahead and open the mobile XTERM. When you install, you see this icon. Just double click on that. So why do I need this mobile XTERM when I already have virtual machine? Where I, have, I can already do so many commands in this. Why do I need this mobile XTERM? It's because just the comfort. The, it's so much user friendly. It provides a wide variety of functionalities multi-execution, split, and lot more. Lot more, we can do SFTP, is also shipped with SFTP. So to connect to the Linux, click on session, click on SSH, give the IP address of the host, the Linux which have installed, then just press OK. For this, let's get the IP address. Okay, it's asking for username, root, and password. Let's get the IP. So we have 192.168.202.132. So let's make 192.168.202.132 and press OK. So give the username as root. OK. So we have already connected to the root and it will ask for password as well. I have already logged in, so it have not asked. So however, let's see IPA, this IP, I already got 132. And you see here ENS33. This means that this is a service name where we have to change the IP configurations. For this, you have to go to CD ETC, this config slash network hyphen press tab. It will complete the remaining part. Now, if you see here, you have seen many files over here. So, IFCFG is a common prefix, and in the suffix, you can see ENS33, the required. You might have something different, you can choose that. Now, type VI IFCFG ENS33. This is a VI editor, press enter. You can see the configurations over here. Press escape and then I the mode change to insert. Now let's do the changes required. In boot proto, you see the DHCP, you need to make it static. And then the on boot is already S. 
so we have to add few more parameters like IP address equals to I need a static IP 192.168.202.1 and then I need to mention net mask equals to 255.255.255.0 and then gateway we have already seen earlier gateway equals to during installation you can see how to use this as well so 192.168.202 only the last digit changes and then we will configure the DNS we will be using the public servers of Google so DNS 1 equals to 8.8.8 .8 .8. this is common for everyone and DNS 2 equals to 8.8.4.4 .4. so this is the IP address almost the same whichever you got earlier just you can change this or you can keep as it is you got and netmask this is the same and gateway this will be the last you can choose whatever you want and escape and then press shift colon and then wq to save this i have saved it now what i need to restart the service so service network restart and press enter it's restarting now you should be smart enough to recognize that you have already connected to 132 but you have changed the IP address to 143 so you may not be getting response from here let's go back to virtual machine and see P IPA you see that you see 192.168.201.43 so let's just close this and 202143 it's asking for login and it will ask for password as well once you give the password it won't ask again so you can save it so i have logged in to 143 ipa so this is what we got 192.168.202.143 this is how we just configure the static ip now let's see how to configure the host name you have during installation you have given some host name but i want to change it how do i do that so you can do that by vi etc slash host name you can use the tab to complete remaining part so loan mode on dot com if you want you can change or else you can ignore as this pq so this is it we have completed the configuration of static IP so even if you restart n number of times you will be having the same IP so there is no more hectic or in the communication of the IP address in the next video we will be discussing about the basic utilities that are required this is it for today thank you